Good evening, church. Hey, welcome to Wednesday Night Thoughts. I hope everybody's having a good day today. And I appreciate you actually spending the time to, to listen in on the video. We just take a couple minutes, hopefully around 10, to spend time in God's Word and just meditate and spend a little bit in prayer. Um, today, we're just going over Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. Um, while everybody's hopefully getting out their Bible and wanting to read along with me, I just want to put out a friendly reminder that this weekend is the daylight savings time. We're going to put the clock, remember, put the clock back an hour, fall back an hour to put it back to standard time. Just a reminder. And also our church this weekend on Saturday night at five o'clock, we're going to be doing a pizza and prayer. We're coming up with election um, this next week, and we just want to spend a little bit of time. Everybody's invited to join us this Saturday night at five o'clock to spend a little bit in prayer, pray for our nation, pray for our election, pray for God's will, God to send forth the spirit to bring his people back to serving him. And also we're going to spend time just eating a little bit of pizza. Um, if you got your Bibles out, just join along with me. <clears throat> Mark chapter 12, verse 28. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving <clears throat> that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments is, <clears throat> Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all that the, your mind, and with all your strength. <clears throat> this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all thy heart, with all thy understanding, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all her burnt offering, offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that dared ask him any more questions. First, I just want to point out that the it was a tradition at that time, the Jewish tradition, to first start out first. Hear, O Lord, the Lord thy God is one Lord. Just to acknowledge that the King of kings, the Lord of lords, is the one and only God. The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is one Lord. And the commandments, in the Old Testament, there was something 600, 650 commandments that the, the Jewish people had to obey, to follow. The commandments were given by God to help people become, a, the group of Israel, become a holy nation, holy people. The commandments were given to, to help people strive to become a better individual, better community, a better nation, more holy, holy like their heavenly father, kingdom. But all that the Old Commandments in the Old Testament did was just reveal sin because all of us are sinners as a result of Adam's sin. We all force, fall short of the glory of God. So no matter how hard we try to obey the commandments, we will always fall short of the glory of God. The Old Testament is given the book of law, the New Testament. When Jesus came, Jesus was the fulfillment of the law. His law was to love God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. First of all, above things, is to acknowledge the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God, God of Israel, is one God. And then to love him with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, to truly grasp the significance of that, to love God with everything that you are. You know, we live in a society where everything immediately is offered to us. We have nice cars, nice houses, nice clothes, nice families, beauty of everything. And, and the enemy will do everything in his power to get you to get your mind off of serving God and to love things of earth, to love God's creation more than to love God. So 
as, as a follower of Jesus Christ, we got to remember to put a full perspective in what the commandment is to love God with everything that we have, to place him, surrender everything into his hands and to love God. Because it also says, he who loves the world, the love of the God, the father is not with him. So to separate yourself from the things of the world and to love God with everything, your whole being, and to love one another as you love yourself. There's significance in that also because the simple fact that the old commandments, the, the commandments were there to allow us to put into action what love was. Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. The care for the well-being of one another. That's what the Old Testament, the Old Commandment was for, is to make us a holy nation. But because of our sinful nature, we fell short of the glory of God. But because of what Jesus did, he set us free from the law of sin and death and condemnation. He's given us the promise of the Holy Spirit. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can bear fruits of the spirit of love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness. And through the Holy Spirit, we can love one another. And the significance of loving one another is the simple fact that if we cannot love the person that we live with, our brother that our sister that we live with, how can we love the God that we do not see? The significance of loving one another, it also is whatever we do unto the least of these, we do unto God. So if we are truly to love God with everything, we have to love one another and love ourselves. Remember that we are created in the image of God. God created us, each and every one of us, specifically for a purpose called by him, to be created by him, to live a life giving him glory and honor, created to do good works for one another, to love one another. And so because he created us, we are fearfully and wonderfully made from conception. We are made by God from cells unto who we are today, we should love ourselves. If we truly can't love ourselves, how can we love God? How can we love one another? And we love God because he first loved us. He revealed what true love is. Loving Jesus loved us enough to die on a cross, completely obedient to Heavenly Father. And because of that obedience, we can enter in his presence and we can fully understand what it means to love one another. I just wanted to finish with verse 34. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. If we obey the simple commandments of loving God with everything that we are and to love one another as we love ourselves, we can enter into the kingdom of God. We think that entering into the kingdom of God occurs when we die and stand before him in heaven. But the kingdom of God is peace, joy, righteousness, and the Holy Spirit. God allowed us to experience the kingdom of God here and now through the Holy Spirit. And if we truly love him and truly love one another and truly love ourselves, we can enter into the kingdom of God now and experience his peace, his love, his joy, his righteousness, because he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords and he deserves everything that we have because without him, we're nothing. He's the one that breathes life into us. He's the one that gives us hope. He's the one that gives us joy. But to experience that, we truly have to love him. And I just wanna thank you tonight for just listening in the significance of what it truly means to love God and to love one another. And I just wanna end in prayer. Pray for you to experience the joy, the love, the peace, entering in the kingdom of God that he has for you. So let us pray. Dearly Father, we just bow down before you and just humble ourselves. And we thank you, God, for giving us your word, your truth, to knowing what and who you are. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You are the creator, the author, the finisher of our faith. And you are the one that offers peace, love, and joy. And I pray, everyone that listens, pray that we will all experience your love, your joy, your peace. Allow us the privilege of entering into your kingdom of peace, joy, and righteousness here while we are here on earth by helping us to love you with everything that we are, our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, placing you far above everything, not bowing down to idols, but laying our lives down at your feet 
because you are our king and help us to love one another, to see things through your eyes. Help us to understand things with your heart and your compassion. I pray that you'll grant us knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You be glorified. And I pray for our nation. Every individual will experience your reality and humble ourselves as a nation and return to you. Pray for our elections, Heavenly Father. Lead us, guide us, and pray that truth shall prevail. No more deception. You be glorified. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again. Thank you for joining me. Have a good night. God bless.